Okay, I wanted to introduce some special guests that we have who um, are with us. We have Dr. Kevin Lehman, who's going to speak in a moment to all of you that have joined, and he's uh, a founder of the school, and you'll see his name on our buildings, and um, we have Melinda Colty, who teaches middle school, and we also have Angela Colby, who teaches kindergarten, and we have our first grade teacher joining us, Joelle Smith, who uh, will be, and all of them will be here available to answer some questions after we do our presentation. So our mission here at Lehman Academy is to offer a rigorous classical education based on the traditions of Western culture, where all of our disciplines are interrelated, allowing scholars the ability to think independently critic and critically. We purpose to partner with supportive parents, pursue excellence, provide a safe and challenging environment, and instill morals and values in order to produce tomorrow's leaders today. And we definitely feel that that partnership with parents is essential for our scholars to get uh, the education that they need and we just want to be here to partner with you and help offer this uh, rigorous and challenging cur curriculum. Dr. Lehman has wrote over 60 books and here are some books that you may be familiar with. We have the birth order book, the uh, birth Home Court Advantage, First Time Mom, Have a New Kid by Friday. He has a wealth of knowledge about children. He's done a lot of writing about families and just core values across um, many different disciplines. And so we're going to talk about a little bit about what sets Lehman Virtual Academy apart from other virtual schools. First of all, we do have that classical education we offer some flexibility. We have relationships. We have uh, live teachers that are available on a daily basis, and they also teach life lessons. Parent education, we teach virtues and values, and we, we are caring, some of our virtues and values are caring, citizenship, perseverance, respect, responsibility, and trustworthiness. In the classical education model, there are three stages. We have the grammar stage, the logic stage, the, and the rhetoric stage. And we have our curriculum, it is entwined with the history timeline. And you'll see an overview of what grades learn what part of history, and then it circles around. So in first grade and fifth grade, they study ancient times. In second and sixth grade, it's medieval times in third and seventh grade is modern times and then in fourth through eighth grade it is the more the modern times up to today and uh, we want to produce critical thinkers who are aware of others and are lifelong learners so we want to prepare our scholars for the future by learning from our past enjoy a quality education that exceeds state standards we hope that our scholars are fostering a joy of learning and we want to partner with the supportive parents to meet the needs of each scholar. We recognize that each scholar is an individual and we also keep our values and virtues central. And this is just an overview of our curriculum. We do use the trivium, which is part of the classical education model. The grammar stage is where they are, our scholars are beginning to memorize rules such as uh, the grammar rules, our logic is where they're applying it, and rhetoric stage is where they're able to argue their beliefs and, and why they believe what uh, and uphold their arguments. Chal our curriculum is challenging. In our math, we are one year ahead. So in first grade, they're doing second grade math. In third grade, they're doing fourth grade math and so on. We use classical liter literature in our own curriculum. And we also use Socratic and discovery-based learning. Our scholars for our virtual academy range from kindergarten through eighth grade. You do have to be a resident of Arizona. We have, uh, you have to have a commitment for integrity. We have to have the, uh, to do the coursework. We also need your commitment to meeting with the teachers. 
We do offer a flexible academic schedule within the week. And we also have daily school hours. So there is an expectation that your scholar will be working on school every day. And we also offer some athletics, the arts, music. We also have enrichments here, such as science and art enrichment here at camp on our campus here at district office. And we also offer it in Sierra Vista. We ask that our parents go over an orientation with their scholars and look at the to make sure that they understand the program. We also ask that our parents provide their scholar with a computer, internet, a digital camera or a phone is sufficient for the, the picture, the camera, a printer, and also the novels that we use since we are using those classical novels. We also ask that you check your email regularly and you're helping to monitor those assignments and grades in Schoology, which is the system that our teachers assign schoolwork in. For vi our teachers offer video conferencing, which is our, how they are doing their face-to-face -face instruction. And you can see by our pictures, it's very interactive. We have all the, uh, our scholars are all logged in at the same time with their teachers. So we still maintain that schoolhouse feel, but it's just virtually. We do offer scholar hours as well. A scholar hour is whenever the teacher is logged in and you are, if your scholar is struggling with something or just wants to meet with a teacher to get some clarification, they're able to log in and the teacher's able to give some one-on-one -on -one attention. We're also available for individual conferences and we, we do have those weekly grade level classes. So in a typical school week, the scholars are assigned their work on a week to week basis and they have a full week to complete those assignments. Scholars are required to log in two to three times a week, depending on their grade level for those live assignments with the teachers. And the scholars need to work the expected number of hours per week to meet the state requirements. Now these are minimum state requirements. A lot of our scholars do work over this for enrichment purposes or just to do some extra activities, but the minimum hours for each grade level are, are here so that you can see what the expectations are. So what you need to get started at a minimum is a Chromebook. Uh, we've discovered that a tablet such as an iPad isn't really as re robust enough to, for all of the capabilities that our program has. You also need a web camera. Most of the time a Chromebook does have those and a microphone so that they can participate in class. They also would need a scanner or a smartphone that has the scanning app as well as a printer. And we would need you to have that willingness to oversee your child's educational day. Here's some screenshots of what you would see. This is a Google Meet. And then this is their email. Every scholar and every parent receives their own email from Lehman so that you have correspondence through that from the teachers. Here are some resources that we offer. We offer some print resources as well as digital resources. So the scholars do receive books that they would be getting at a brick and mortar campus so that they're able to do the same curriculum that they do at our brick and mortar campuses. And we also offer these extra resources so that they're able to log in and do some enrichment, for example, in math. Our um, teachers use Schoology to assign lessons and give assignments. And that's also where we house all of the grades so that you're able to see the grades on the assignments as soon as the teacher grades it. And then here's what an example of a class would look like. You see week one, and then you see there's five days of assignments. And they could work on day one and day two on Monday if they wanted to do both. But just giving them those five days broken down like that is to help our scholars stay on track so that they don't have, they don't get to Friday and realize that they haven't gotten their work done the way that they need to. We found that it's best to pace it for them a little bit inside those folders. 
this is just a little information about me. I do have a master's in leadership as well as curriculum and instruction. My name is Beth Caesar and I'm the principal. I am originally from South Carolina and I now reside in Arizona. So now I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Lehman to give him a little bit of, so he can give you a little bit of background about Lehman Academy. And then from Dr. Lehman, we'll move into letting our teachers talk a little bit about their classrooms. So Dr. Lehman, I'd like to turn it over to you. Hey, thank you, Beth. And hello, everybody. I'm so glad to join you today. And I've got to tell you that Beth Caesar knocks it out of the park. You know, this is not an easy job. A virtual anything is easy. And she does a great job. And we've got great teachers. And I'll tell you straight out, we're only as good as our teachers. So good teachers are hard to find. And I love teachers that have a heart, okay, that give a rip about kids, to put it bluntly. And here's some irony, you know, <laughs> the, the fact that we have Lehman Academy of Excellent Schools, we have seven brick and mortar schools, if I'm thinking right. And uh, looking back at my life, that's an amazing thing because I hated school, okay? I didn't like teachers. I'm saying that as nicely as I can. I didn't like teachers. And trust me, they didn't like me. I was the youngest in the family. I could take over a class with ease. If a teacher was weak, watch out teacher. Uh, so there I was in my senior year of high school, fourth from the bottom of my class, okay? Hardly graduated, but an old school teacher, I mean old, she was somewhere between estrogen and death, uh, pulled me aside one day and she said, Kevin, do you think you could ever use those skills you have for something positive. And you know what? I remember thinking skills, I have skills, but you know, that old lady, that old woman who I learned to love tutored me through my senior year of high school, my second semester. And I graduated by the skin of my teeth. But from that day forward, I always had a tremendous appreciation for good teaching. And on our virtual Academy, what I can promise you is that we all have teachers, who will be attentive to your children. Our school started over a cup of coffee where somebody said to me, Kevin, would you ever like to have a school? Well, I thought, man, I'd always like to have a school, but how could I ever have a school? He said, you could have a charter school. And so from our charter school, of course, part of that is our, our virtual academy. And I have dealt with homeschoolers for years. I have thousands and thousands, and I mean thousands, of homeschoolers who follow me on my Facebook. Um, I'm well known uh, in some of the Christian churches throughout America. I've spoken all over the country. I've done everything from Phil Donahue to Oprah to Regis, to you name it. I've, if there's a TV show out there, I've been out there. So I've been talking about kids and family. I have one wife. Uh, we've been married for over 50 years in a row. Uh, we have five kids. I've been there and done that. Um, when you have five kids, um, that's pretty good training. So I've always sort of uh, prided myself by, by being down to earth with people. And I want people to know that we care. Our, our mantras are be kind to one another. Encourage one another. You know, we think kids ought to learn that they're not the center piece of the nation, okay? Other people count in life. Now, I've written lots of books. Making Children Mind Without Losing Yours is a million plus seller. The Birth Order book, Have a New Kid by Friday. That they have a brand new book out that people ought to be reading now during the coronavirus virus is uh, why kids misbehave and what to do about it. So we know ways of giving kids vitamins that they need. They need vitamin A, which is accountability. They need vitamin E, which is encouragement, not praise. I wish I had time to go into why praise is destructive with your children. What did he say? I said, why praise is destructive with your children. You need to learn to encourage your kids rather than praise them. And by the way, I'm on the subject. Your kids hate your questions. And ladies, if you're listening, your husbands hate your questions too. 
men and children have many similarities, okay? Uh, Dr. Lehman, really, uh, really, just hang in there for a few more seconds with me on this point. My husband, Lehman, doesn't talk to me. He grunts. He doesn't answer me when I ask him questions. Well, try this. Ask your husband his opinion. He'll talk your ear off. Ask your scholar his opinion. He or she will talk your ear off. So traditionally, what have we done when kids come home from school? How is your school today? Honey, fine. What'd you do in school today? Nothing. And then they go to their bedroom and text their buddies like a woodpecker that's got a bad case of ADHD. And they systematically shut us out of their lives. So we want on hands, and let's be as blunt as I can be here. You parents, you're the best teacher your child will ever have. You gotta understand that. So the routines you put in your home and the expectations and the importance of school and reading and doing assignments on time and getting them in and promoting responsibility, that's all part of what's make your scholars uh, experience at Lehman Virtual a successful one. So we take it seriously, but check this out. Anybody who knows me knows funds my middle name. I was telling my grandson just yesterday, I said, Connor, I said in fourth grade, the teacher put me outside of the classroom. She put me out in the hallway. What do you think I did? And he guessed a few things. Uh, you thought about what you did wrong. Uh, you thought you were going to get in trouble. He, he, I said, no, Connor, I went home. He said, what? I said, I went home. <laughs> now, I'm so old. Parents weren't at home. Uh, uh, parents weren't home. Well, my mom was a working nurse. No parents home. So I went home, got a fishing pole, went to the creek. That's the kind of kid I was. You know, I was a handful. But I wish I had teachers as a kid like we have at Lehman Academy. And a couple of those teachers that are with us today, who hopefully you'll hear from in a few minutes, I've seen them. They're extraordinary. They are so good. They're creative. And I think school ought to be fun. Fun. And, you know, it ought to be broken up assignments, you know, in our brick and mortar schools. In fact, I was just talking to a young lady this morning about it. I said, we don't assign homework over the weekend. We think weekend time ought to be time for family. We want to honor families. When kids come back from vacation, there's not a whole bunch of things that have to get done. Why? We want that scholar and that family to enjoy their time together. So it's, it's, this is pretty basic, but it's basic wonderful. Lehman Academy has won awards as the best school in Tucson, Arizona. And let me tell you, we have great schools in Tucson, Arizona. A lot of good charter schools here. But we've been uh, voted the best. And we're proud of that. Our little school down in Sierra Vista, I say little school, we thought we'd have 300 kids in it. We got 782 in it last time I looked. Voted the best school in Cochise County. So we bring excellence to the forefront for your son or daughter to enjoy, to be challenged with. And we do challenge them. And so again, accountability, vitamin A, vitamin E, but check this out, that's encouragement. But one of my favorites is time out, no. We're not afraid to tell your scholar or you, quite frankly, no, okay? We're professionals, we're educators, we know what we're doing. You entrust us with your kids, and we promise you we'll do the very best job we can be, do. And we'll be on that honker talking to you. You know, that's important. I tell all of our teachers in all of our schools, we have one school in Colorado, six in Arizona. First two weeks of school, I want you on the phone talking to that parent. I want you to give them a bird's eye view of what you see come in the door with little Charles or little Danielle or whomever because it's all about relationships. And you heard Beth talk about that earlier. And again, she does a marvelous job. So I don't know what else I could say, but uh, you're in good hands uh, with Lehman. Uh, we're not for everybody, I suspect, but we'd love to, we love the fact of just looking at us. And I think the more you look at us, you'll see that we're the real deal and we care about kids. I tell people this all the time, when I walk on campus, I love it because I get, I get ambushed <laughs> by ankle biters all the way through the, uh, the middle schoolers with a hug. There's Dr. Lehman. Well, we want the kids 
to love us because we love them. So thanks for being with us today. I'll be available if you want to ask me questions. Most of the academic questions, quite frankly, are best answered by our faculty and, and by Beth, again, who does such a great job for us. Thank you, Dr. Lehman. I really appreciate you being with us today. I'm going to turn it over to a few of our teachers who've joined us today. I see a couple more popped in as well. So Melinda, I'm going to start with you. If you just want to give an overview of what middle school ELA in history looks like and some of the projects that you've done this year. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Melinda Quilty. I'm the middle school language arts and history teacher. This is my third year with the virtual academy and my fourth year with Lehman. I was at the Miranda campus the very first year. I moved away, but I love the curriculum and Dr. Lehman's standards that I was super excited when I was asked to come back. So one of the things I'm always the most excited about is that our language arts ties into our history. So we read some great novels, like the eighth graders is reading Animal Farm right now, and the sixth graders are reading Treasure Island. And those aren't books you get to see in most public schools anymore. And they, the eighth graders are loving Animal Farm because at the same time we've studied the Cold War and communism and they're able to make those connections. And the best thing about it, even in this environment, they're excited to share why they think the way they think and the connections they're seeing on the outside world. So I wanted to just show you guys a couple of projects because I kind of love my scholars and they do some amazing work. So I kind of want to brag about them for a second. I'm gonna present my screen right here. And this is just a couple of samples. I could have spent all day with hundreds because they all are producing great work. I think it's presenting now. All right, so a big part of the classical education is the timeline. So every week, my scholars are making a timeline about what they're studying history. They're not only saying what happened, but why is it important and like the bigger impact of it all. So on this one, you can see about the space race, Woodstock, the Cold War, all of that's in this kind of area. This is the eighth grade, which is those modern times. Um, every week we do a portfolio um, where the scholars draw a picture that represents and then write a couple of paragraphs of everything they learned. That's their assessment. So I know they understand it. This was one of the scholars from studying um, John F. Kennedy. Um, that it does not have to be that beautiful, but she did an amazing job right there. That is just, I mean, that the effort she put into it and how proud she was of it. And she should be like, she did an amazing job. When we're studying different things in history, I often have the scholars make maps. Um, this one's with the Louisiana Purchase. And instead of just having a printout of a map, these are their created maps that has a meaning to them. And on the second page, they had a key for the different colors of it all. So they're creating their own living history book as we go along. And again, that literature and our writing and it all ties together. Okay, I have one more. This is the other part of our portfolio. This is kind of their written assessment. So the scholar just learned all about the first industrial revolution. So they told me when it happened, where it happened, why is it important? And it's kind of all there for everybody to see. Um, that's middle school language arts and um, history. Do you guys have any questions? All right, Beth, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, Melinda. I believe I saw Taylor logged in. It looks like she might have just, oh, looks like she might have got kicked out. So, Joelle, I'll turn it over to you for first grade so we can get a perspective from, from the younger grade as well. Absolutely. So we are also doing copybooks in the lower grades in history and science. And what they do is they'll study a topic for a week and then they'll write down the facts that they learned. And they do this with a parent. So we make sure that the spelling and the grammar is correct. And it just is a way for us to keep track of everything that they've learned. And this is really exciting because at the end of the year, it's a, you know, a composite of everything they've studied throughout the year. And it's their own work. So they take a lot of pride and ownership in what they've created. But here is an example of um, a first grade copybook page. Let me present. And they usually include an illustration to go with their writing. And we ask that you know they take their time and they do their best work using their best handwriting and coloring. So 
This was beginning of the year for first grade. We study biology. So you can see her picture of the desert grassland and rainforest. And then she goes into all of the facts that she learned as she studied. And the great thing about virtual is there's so much freedom in how they're learning the information. So they're reading books, they're watching videos, they're researching things online. They can choose basically how they're learning the content of what we're learning or what we're studying that week. And so they have a lot of fun doing different projects or making different copybook pages to show what they've learned. The other thing I really like about classical is recitations. So in first grade, they're obviously very good at memorizing and we practice their public peak. Um, public speaking skills. So here is a video of a recitation from first grade. Oh, and this is a habitat image from one of my scholars. Um, here it is. Okay. Here we go. So it's having a little bit of an issue um, downloading and keeping up to speed, but that's just an example of a scholar getting up and saying her recitation. And it's been great for building their confidence, getting them comfortable with one another and practicing that public speaking. So we have a lot of fun with those. Are there any questions for first grade or the lower grades that I can answer? Yes, go ahead. Okay, I think I have to read off. Um, my daughter is finishing up kindergarten at the Miranda campus right now. And so just one question I had is because of all the distance learning, they've said when first grade starts, there's going to be a lot of review at the brick and mortar school. So is that true in virtual academy also? Will you be doing that review or do you have a separate timeline? No, absolutely. We try and follow the curriculum map that the Miranda campus is using and our curriculum naturally does a review for the first few weeks. So if there's any gaps, we can really reinforce any skills that we need to right at the beginning of the year. Okay. And then my other question was on the hours. I know it had that list of the, the required hours. Is that just coursework where you are on with the teacher sitting down during the work or does that also count like the arts and the athletics and everything else like that? Yeah, that would count everything. Okay. You're logging for school hours. So it could be reading, math, science, history, music, you know, dance, art, creating artwork. Okay. Thank you. Mm hmm Any other questions? Okay, I'll give it back to you, Beth. Thank you, Joelle. I appreciate you sharing that. Uh, we also have Angela Colby on who is who teaches our kindergarten and she's going to talk a little bit about what reading groups look like in kindergarten. So Hi, Angela. <laughs> I apologize. I am not normally in my son's um, bedroom, but my other son is doing schoolwork on our computer in our classroom. So I had to make do and come in here and hide. Um, anyways, yes, I am the kindergarten teacher. One thing that I have implemented this year um, that I think is really, really important, especially for kindergarten, is um, those reading groups and also writer's workshop. With those reading groups, I have been able to figure out wh where each child is on their individual level of reading. 
I either meet with them in a small group, two to three students or individually, just to give them a little bit of extra assistance. Um, you know, in with learning how to read, it's more than just reading the words, it's comprehending, it's fluency, it's understanding how to decode words and whatnot. And so having those reading groups has been really, really helpful this year for, for my scholars, um, especially preparing them for first grade, because there is a jump in reading going from kindergarten to first grade. Um, the other thing that I implement is writer's workshop. I think it's so very important for children to have a true solid foundation in writing, understanding different um, parts of writing, how to be a good listener and author and illustrator and different things like that. Um, that that typically takes place during my live class meetings for ELA, where we are writing together as a um, as a group, and the kids are allowed to do some inventive writing as well, and also using different tools as environmental print and word wall words and stuff like that. So it has definitely been beneficial having implement those two different things within our class. Are there any questions for Angela? Okay, thank you, Angela. And I see Taylor. I see Taylor just joined us uh, again. Taylor, do you would you like to speak about uh, middle school math? Yeah, sorry, I was just checking in with the scholar that was working on an assignment, so I apologize that I stepped out. But um, yes, my name is Taylor Bennett, and I'm the middle school math teacher. Um, this is my fourth year teaching middle school, high school math, but my first year with Lehman Virtual, and um, it's been an incredible experience, and I feel lucky that I've been able to learn along with a lot of our scholars this year. Um, you know, one of the great things that we get to do um, with the accelerated curriculum with math is that we actually get to look at the big picture um, with math. So it's not just necessarily about factoring or you know slope intercept form. We get to look at why are we doing these things and um, what are we going to use slope intercept form for and not just um, you know two plus two is four. So it's been an incredible experience implementing the classical education into your standard math class. A lot of the time when we talk about classical education math kind of you know, people don't usually think about it um, when they think of classical education. So it's been um, pretty exciting this year just going through that and, ex you know, talking to the scholars and having those discussions about why we're doing this today versus just, hey, you need to learn these um, these formulas and you need to solve them. So that's what we get to do um, in my class. And um, yeah, I mean, we just have been taking it every day and things have been going really well. And if anyone has any questions for me, I'd be happy to answer anything. All right, well, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Taylor. We also have Brent Hesbridge with us who teaches our art and music as well as is our IT support. So I just wanted to make sure I introduced him and he can talk a little bit about how he gets you started once you enroll and then what he um, what kind of projects he has going on throughout the year. Hi, everybody. I'm Brian Tesbridge and yep, I do the tech support and I get you all started with the with the uh, classes. Um, I'm the one that sends out the orientation email to you and um, the video to get you guys started. And then also you have my email to get in contact with me. I'm always here for questions to help you with anything, getting into Clever or Schoology or um, any of the other products that we use here at the Academy. And then I also teach art and music and I really enjoy that too. Um, drawing with your scholars. Um, is really fun and uh, I don't remember ever really drawing with my art teacher but I get to do that with your scholars every week so we will just look at a video and start drawing right together they can see what I'm drawing I can see what they're drawing and uh, we can uh, get better together and they can even see my mistakes which I think is really important um, that they they they're not afraid to make mistakes when they're drawing so um, just really enjoy it. And uh, do you guys have any questions for me? Technology wise, too. <laughs> I have a quick question. Sure. Um, 
how do you you said you do like an art video do you do like art once a week music once a week or how does that work how usually we we'll talk about a composer and then we'll do some art and and draw um that's kind of how i've been handling it so we might you know just take one composer each week and just kind of okay this is about you know uh bach mm -hmm. and a few video you know maybe a short video and and just uh get them going um i probably focus a little more on the art because that's where i'm i'm a little more comfortable but um yeah uh and then also we do have the freedom with the virtual academy so if your scholar does have piano lessons mm -hmm. you can count those hours okay um say you're taking a pottery class at michael's you can count those hours towards that in for your minutes okay so um you don't have to necessarily do art and music with me every single minute either. Um, you have that flexibility and that freedom. All right. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Brent. I'm just going to open the floor now for uh, any additional questions that anyone might have for Dr. Lehman or the teachers that have joined us today. We do have some other teachers, but some of them are actually teaching right now. So everyone wasn't able to join us right um, today for the info session. But I just wanted to see if anyone had any more questions or if you needed any help with where to go to register, if you're planning on registering. So um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Hey, Beth, Dr. Lehman here. Yeah. Uh, just a comment. One of the things that Brent said really caught my attention because I was out on our, one of our campuses talking to a sixth grader uh, earlier this year. And this very uh, approachable young lady just came up. She knew who I was and she sat down and she started to tell me why she loved Lehman. And I think it's really important for people to hear what she said. She said, I love Lehman because when you express your opinion, you don't get put down like I did in my other schools. And people accept you for who you are. If we can pull that off at every brick and mortar and through our virtual academy, we're doing something. So anyway, I just love being with you. I'm gonna turn off my mic and listen, but uh, I had to throw that in there. That's part of what Lehman Academy is all about. Thank you, Dr. Lehman. Does anyone else have any questions or comments before we close for today? So I guess my question would be that, um, so it's my understanding that through the virtual academy that these students have access to all the after school activities of the brick and mortar schools? That is correct. The after school activities during the school day, they're part of Lehman Virtual Academy. So uh, we have had some parents ask if they could go to a brick and mortar campus for art, for example. And that isn't the case because the, it'd be too hard to manage who's going on and off a of campus during the school day. But after school activities such as sports clubs, those are all available to our virtual academy scholars. OK. And also, um, I was wondering what the um, homeschool enrichment science and art classes look like. Okay, I actually teach the enrichment classes for science, so I can give you a little bit of information about that. And Brent does the art. Those are once a week. And if you are part of Lehman Academy, they are free. We also extend it to the homeschool families so that haven't fully committed to Lehman and they do pay a small fee for joining and it's once a month. During that time for science, we choose a different topic to do science experiments on, such as uh, we did some chemical um, experiments at Christmas and we made Frosty the Snowman melt with acetone. Uh, we've, uh, we just recently studied weather and all of the scholars that came made anemometers and a tornado in a bottle. So it's hands on time for science. And it's the same kind of thing with art enrichment. It's that time where the scholars are able to come together and see each other face to face. 
So in Sierra Vista, if they live in Sierra Vista, they, they are able to go to the Sierra Vista campus and see each other face to face rather than video conference like we are now so they can have some interaction and then if they're in the tucson area they actually come to the district office and we divide it up where it's the younger scholars in the morning and the older scholars in the afternoon so it's more specific to what they're studying in their own classes okay brent did you want to add anything about art oh just i i have a I enjoy it every month uh, doing that with the scholars. Um, we we did a lot of different things this year um, from having a eight foot, eight by 10 foot painting that we threw paint on for Jackson Pollock to um, doing sidewalk painting, or we did sidewalk drawings where we uh, we drew on the sidewalk um, to um, the, in May, we're gonna be doing uh, some printmaking. So, um, I just trying to keep a variety of things for them to do every month and for them to get together. Um, pretty much exactly what Beth was talking about. And right now, obviously, it's looking a little different because everyone's having to do distance learning. So we're having to even do those virtually. Um, but we are still, it's still interactive. It's just not quite the same. But we're, real, we're hoping that we'll be able to eventually have everyone back in a room again soon. Um, I have one last question. Um, is now I have an eighth grader who goes to Lehman Oro Valley, and he was part of the first class when the school opened. Um, he's been with those kids for a long time. Do you guys have any plans for a Lehman virtual high school or anything of that sort? Um. It's a dream, but as far as it actually being on paper, and I can tell you when it was going to happen, I can't tell you that that is in the works at the moment. But every time someone asks me that question, I make sure that I relay that because I know that is definitely there's definitely a lot of interest in a, a virtual academy for high school. So I'll be sure to pass on that question. Thank you for bringing that up. Okay. Are there any other questions or comments? Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, is the after school enrichment programs the only um, like social interaction support that virtual academy offers or is there anything else um, along those lines? So those are the only things related to virtual. Uh, we have allowed, we do have some scholars that created their own virtual clubs. So they do have, they interact sort of like we are now in a virtual club setting and those have been real fun to observe. And I did see the question in chat. I'll get to that one in just a moment. I didn't want anyone to think I didn't see that. Uh, but uh, we also do allow them to participate in after school activities at their nearest campus. So they still would have that scholar interaction after school at those campuses if they chose to participate. And we make sure we include those in our newsletters so that if you live near Marana, you'll know what's going on at Marana. So if you okay. want your scholar to be in a sport, you'll see when sport tryouts are. Um, what age does sports start? Uh, every campus is, has a little bit of a different um, difference with that. And I don't want to misquote. So it, you, I would call the nearest campus to where you live at. In general, it's middle school age, but definitely contact the school closest to you to find out more specifics about that when it starts back up again. All right. Thank you. Thank and you. we have done a couple of meetups in the past. Like this year, um, a lot of the scholars met with some of the teachers at the zoo. Mm -hmm. um, last year, at the end of the year, we did it at Top Golf, and we've done bowling. So those are rare, but we have done that a couple of times where the scholars um, have got to meet their teacher live in person. Like I came in from town last year, and Joelle was there. We were smaller last year. Now we have more teachers, but I know Miss Taylor's, um, Miss Bennett's gone to the the zoo. So we mm -hmm. try to do that at least once a semester is always our goal. Obviously, right now we can't do that though. Thank you. And and in regards to the schedule, we were very fortunate. Our scholars, of course, they were. There were some 
scholars that were affected a little bit about co with COVID-19 because of parents staying home or siblings from other schools staying home. But for the most part, our curriculum stayed exactly the same. We didn't need to change it. And we felt very fortunate that we were one of the few schools across the country that didn't have to revamp everything overnight. Uh, so that was definitely an advantage that our teachers and our scholars had was even though the world was changing around them, school was a consistency, which is good for them at this point, whenever things are a little uncertain. Are there any other questions or comments? Well, thank you all for joining. Thank you, Dr. Lehman, once again, for taking time out of your day for joining us. Thank you to all of our fabulous teachers who came in to be a part of this info session to make sure you all had the information that you need to make an informed decision. And I hope that I will see a lot of your scholars in the near future whenever we start up again. And if you have any other questions before you make your final decision, please feel free to reach out to us. My email and my phone number is on the website and I will be happy to answer any questions that you have. Thanks again for joining and if you um, have any other questions I'll hang back for another minute or two if you want to ask something privately as people are starting to drop out. If you have nothing else that you'd like to ask then you're free to go and I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you for joining. <laughs>